Uh, we're back to discuss Green Room, and if you saw our review, um, we mostly liked it. It's uh, my biggest uh, complaint, I think, besides the fact that I think the third act really slows down um, when it's sort of when it, when it gets to the point where they're sort of on even footing, the whole movie just seems to slow down to a crawl, mm -hmm. and it's not a very good like tense, suspenseful crawl. It's like you know, like this is going to end one way or the other, and by this point, we've been beaten down so much by the movie that we're fine either way. Like yeah. if they die, if they die. You know, and if they don't die, then they don't die. But, like, at this point, it just needs to... It needed to wrap things up. Um, one thing that really got to me, and it's only because I went and, like, watched the trailer for the movie, the shot where uh, Imogen Poots jumps out of the couch <laughs> is in the trailer. Oh, really? That's... That, that's too bad because that's probably one of the better shots it's of the one movie. of the better things that happens and it's one of the better parts of the third act it's one of the like the like snap like that's where they take the upper hand and so I watched the whole movie waiting for them to do that and it really it really sucked a lot of life out of it for me but it was a cool shot and they couldn't resist putting it in so I'm sure that the focused groups all told them, you know, that's the coolest shot in your movie. You got to make sure and tell people about it. I see. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they, they had a lot of uh, because they 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 dwindled the cast down so quickly. It's like they had a lot of solid characters. Like I said, this uh, horror movies usually have characters that I just hate and just want them to die. It's like, or I want to be done with them already. This one, everyone in the band seemed okay. And I was kind of shocked when they kind of eliminated over half of them in, like, a five-minute time span. Well, I, I don't have a problem with that. Like, and, like, again, like, there's no, there's no, like, I want this character to die character mm -hmm. in the movie on either right. side. on either side. They're all interesting. They're all developed. They're, they all have something. Um, they all have some kind of a personality to them. Um, them killing, like, the three got the, well... Was it three or two that they killed, like, right back-to-back? Back? Well, uh, they, they killed, killed two. two of them back-to-back. The back. They killed two back-to-back. Back. got the dog, and then the and other then, guy jumped out the window and got yeah. stabbed. Yeah, and the girl, it was, like, another five or ten minutes before uh, she five, got hit outside. Five, probably, I think, yeah. But, yeah, that's where that's where the second act ends. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I'm talking about. Like, that's how things got really slow, and you only have two characters left, and... They're, like right. they don't really have much to say to one another, and and then they they make their plan off camera, which is necessary for the reveal that the trailer already broke for broke you. for yeah. me. So it, it it's really like like it, it's one of those things. Like I'm just I'm never going to see a, a movie with a surprise in it again. That well, yeah, that's <laughs> unfortunate and true probably. Um, it, it was a little weird to see like just Patrick Stewart like calling off all of his Nazi thugs just be like, "No, we're good. We 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 got all the forensics we need to make this look like it needs to." How we half of you just leave so that the other half of us can get can conveniently killed. Um, that's that was my problem. Like there, uh, there were thirteen to fifteen guys outside, and then all of a sudden there were only two and the cleanup dude. And then they go over to where they're planning, planning the. There weren't that many people. Three. There, there was only Patrick Stewart, the dog guy, and four other guys. Well, in in the uh, start of the movie when he tells them to get the red laces guy, right? There's a group of like. 10 red laces guys standing there. They're all smoking weed, and he says, who hasn't smoked weed yet? Oh. oh. Okay. So yeah, because I think there's a total of eight, eight of them who end okay. up dying. So I, I counted all the people with red laces. There's nope. people roaming around. Nope. They I didn't have all of them. I guess the odds just seemed more overwhelming than they actually were. They didn't have a lot of them. Remember, when they're, when they're outside, and they're, like, sending people in in groups... Mm -hmm. Like, they send the guy with the dog in, and he comes out. Then two other guys tag in, and they go in, and the other guys are staying out. Like, it wasn't a huge group of people on both sides. 
they just happen to be the ones with the guns and the experience and the knowledge of where they were mm-hmm. and everything like that. So it wasn't like Patrick Stewart's plan was bad and he was working on, but he was just working on the assumption that th- like that this was a, you know, a done deal. It was just how much, how well they could cover up what happened and where it happened. Um, all because that one dumbass had like stabbed that girl on the head. And <laughs> there, yeah, there, there are some, there are some moments of this movie that are just surreal. Like, Patrick Stewart dropping the end bomb. I saw you like just react, like blew your damn mind. It yeah. did. It's it's <laughs> Patrick Stewart, like the most non-threatening person in the world. Uh, the, the there were some things introduced throughout the movie that I thought they were going to delve deeper into, and they didn't. Like when he finds out that that the Daniel the the traitor was going to run off with his girl, who was conveniently the girl he got stabbed, and um, they find that baseball bat, like, wrapped up to preserve evidence. Mm -hmm. And he starts to talk about it. You feel like they're going to go a little deeper into that, but then they never mention it again. (laughs) Yeah, you know what it is, though. I mean, they give you enough information to... Like, there doesn't need to be, like, a three-minute flashback on, like, what they did to make that baseball bat bloody to, like, make you understand. Like, it's how they, it's their leverage against Patrick Stewart. The conversation happens like everybody's in the know and he's explaining it to this guy because he's like, yeah, this happened before you were part of our group. You saved us. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, somebody's got to explain, like, what what's the deal with the bat? Like, well, you assume... Why, why these Nazi killers are <laughs> are worried about a bloody bat being taken by a traitor? That doesn't make I, sense to you? Yeah. Well, it didn't look bloody. It was just it was. an aluminum bat. It no, was, it totally it was, was. Yeah, it was. Uh, it, yeah, moreover, it's a little shocking how many, how many of these Nazi punks are... Uh, very hesitant to use violent. Uh, they 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 don't have the stomach for it. It seemed like because the 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 one guy at the end there like just like I don't have the stomach for this. I'm gonna go to jail. Well, it makes and sense. That that guy was that guy was consistent throughout. Yep. And like Patrick Stewart gave him his red laces like mm-hmm. during the movie. Sure. And the guy was like, really, really, <laughs> like for what? Like is this a trick? Like you could see it in the guy's mm-hmm. face, like. I didn't earn this. I'm like the biggest coward here. Like I haven't, I haven't killed anybody tonight. But well, he, he seemed like he was the guy in charge at the beginning of the movie, more or less. He was handling the situation. He until... was he was like the club owner basically. Um, but he was like, yeah, he was like the second in command, I guess for you. you for also some reason, get the feeling that when he gives him those laces, he's looking at him kind of like, do I still want these after all the shit that's gone down tonight? Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. I, that, that's the feeling I got from that scene. That guy, that that guy had like the ability to be a redemptive character, and I think that's why they kind of kept his thread the way they did through the movie. Okay, because then they had the Justin guy that's <clears throat> inside with them, who's also a presence in the club before everything goes down, and then which I kind of didn't see him suddenly being. I didn't see him trading on that one because it seemed like he had some weird like hangups with the entire band as they were walking into the door in the first place. Are you talking about Daniel or Justin? Da- Daniel, I think Daniel, right? The Daniel was the brother of the Mohawk guy, the one that he... got him the gig. Yes, uh, that ended up getting a shotgun to the face. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Justin, he's referring to the the one that they snap his arm. The guy that looks like Matt Stone. Yeah. He's okay. the one that tells him this is a fire hazard when they get there and yeah. be like, all right, stay in here and all that kind of stuff. Like, he's surly to them, but like everything that happens to the band, mm-hmm. like um, them waking up in the field, them getting completely screwed over by that guy with the mohawk, mm-hmm. and then them being treated the way they were at that gig. That's all what it's like to be in a band. Oh, yeah, like, un- that, un- undoubtedly. Yeah. <laughs> Especially a punk rock band in the middle of fuck off yeah, nowhere. Right. 
at Club Nazi in Club, Oregon right. somewhere. You're wearing a DK shirt and you're going to play Nazi punk fuck off and and uh-huh. I'm like, are you going? Are you trying to get stabbed right now? I yeah. I, I kind of mm, wow. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> I, I like the scene where that guy, like, he's having to, ha- he's trying to have kind of a nice moment with the band, and he's just like, that song you played was really hard. I killed her to it. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> like, you, you said that so nonchalant. Yeah, no, nothing happens with that other band. Like, they, uh, maybe somebody overdosed, and that's about all the we got from them. The, the other band? Yeah. They, they went on. Well, they went on, but but then they got to the their their end their end of their arc of the story was they were put inside of a safe house to hang out for a couple yeah. weeks while things brush over. And they showed a guy with a needle in the arm and right. the other one eating cereal. So and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Something tells me there's more that just didn't quite make the the cutting room. They floor. were they were a known quantity, and it's I mean, like I said, after the second act. There didn't need to be any more movie, really. It yeah. just it just needed to wrap up, and it it did it as well as I think it could have. Um, I think the last scene of the movie was well done. And very a, a very good way to go out on the yeah. entire thing. Yes. So anyway, that's Green Room. If you like the way we do these, please like the video, subscribe, check out all the written and video reviews at dalemaxfield.com, and thanks for watching. Bye.